In this video, I'm going to show you how to add files and folders inside of a Moodle course site. I'll start by going into my course site, where I currently have nothing, um, no files or no folders. I, if I needed to, I could turn editing on. It is currently on, so I can just proceed from here. To add any content inside of a topic area or content area inside of Moodle, you come to add an activity or resource. Activities are those things where students and you are going back and forth with materials or information, and resources are things where you are putting something out there for them. And that's what a file or a folder would be. And they're right here. I'm going to start with File, so I select it, and then say Add. And then I'm going to have some basic settings, things that I need to fill in. I'll start with a name. In this case, I'm going to upload a syllabus. And then I've got two choices here. I can either drag and drop a syllabus file onto this area, or I can click on this button, which brings me to a file picker and um, where I can browse for a file and choose to upload it. So I'm going to start with a drag and drop approach. You can't see my mouse off the screen, but I'm dragging. There we go, and dropping. And when you do choose to drag and drop, while it's loading up the file, you'll see a bar like that, and it'll take a moment. Once the file has successfully loaded, you'll see an icon for the file type and the name of it. I always like to double check and make sure that I did load the file that I you know, intended on loading in there. When you've chosen to do a file, adding a new file, please just put one thing in here. It is possible. Moodle will let you put more than one, but students will never see the second item, so it doesn't really serve any purpose. There are a few other settings here that you can deal with. In this case, with a Word document, I usually don't touch any other setting at all on the page. And the reason for that is that it's just not that critical. The one you might choose to use would be here for restrict access, where you can add a restriction for with like a date, that this file won't become visible until a certain date. Otherwise, at this point, I just say save and return to course. And there I can see my file, and it retains that icon so that the students know what that is going to be. I'm going to do this again, add, and this time, uh, reading. And I'll just give it that name. This time I'm going to use the other method for loading a file so that you can see how that works. I'm going to click on the Add a File button, Browse. And then I'm going to, in this case, I'm going to add a PDF. Open. Your screen might look slightly different from that with a different operating system, but it's essentially whatever you're used to, to seeing when you browse for and select a file. I see it listed there. This has to do with who uploaded the file. If that concerns you at all, change the name to the original author of the item or whatever. Students never see any of this, so it doesn't matter. Upload this file just as in the other, it takes a moment to proceed. And as it's completed uploading, you'll then see the icon. Now, with PDFs, there is a setting that I think it's important to go ahead and change. Your web browser will interpret that PDF as a PDF and immediately display it on the screen. And what that means here is as if we moved forward out of Moodle into something else. The student is no longer in Moodle. If they hit the back arrow on their browser, they'll be back into it. But I sometimes find that a little bit confusing. So what I prefer to do is set the display of that PDF to show up in another tab. Now, in Moodle, it does say New Window, but it's, it's a new tab in the browser. Um, and that tends to make it a little bit easier for students to remain inside of Moodle and yet see that they have opened up this PDF file. Now, PDFs can be interpreted by browsers and computers in a lot of different ways. The students may have uh, a different PDF reader as their default uh, of some sort or another. Uh, you never quite know, but generally speaking, having it open up in a different window is the easiest approach for students. So I do tend to make that change. And then I ignore all the rest of these and I save and return to course. Now I've got my two readings. So now you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. I clicked on readings, and if I shift there, my screencast, you can see here's my Moodle still, and there's my scan. Bring this back down. There we go. Okay, and a Word document will simply open up give you the option to open up Word. And again, this might look a little different for you or your students depending on your operating system. So that's how you add files. Uh, if you would like a folder full of files, you do that here also. Add an activity or resource, 
and we're going to choose folder, and we're going to choose add, and we name the folder, maybe this time I'll call this readings, and we'll have more than one thing in there. I could give it a description if I felt like my students needed some additional information about what was in that folder. And in this case, this looks exactly the same as it did for folders. It's just that here, if you add multiple items, students will be able to see multiple items. So let's say I put in there, I'll just drag a couple things in there. We'll have to and then when they're finished, they both show up. You know, you can have as many files inside of a folder as you like. It does eventually reach the point where it's a, a little silly and you might want to organize in a different way. But there we go. All right, do you want folder contents to display on a separate page? That is, will students see the name of the folder, they click on it, and it brings them to another page in Moodle that displays them? Or do you want it in line inside the course site itself? I'll show you both of these. Common module settings, there's really nothing that you need there. Restrict access, again, if you wanted to put in a date to restrict the access, you could do that. Tags and competencies, just ignore. I'm going to save and return to course. There's my folder. I use the default approach, where when I click on it, it brings me to another page with these. I would say, generally speaking, if you have more than two or three items inside a folder, you're going to want to bring it up in another page. I'm clicking back to get to the root of the course here, and that's because if this were set up, and I'm going to go and edit my settings to change that, so you can see how that works, inline in a course page, save and return to course. So as you can see, it's easy enough to fix something as needed. Now it's inline, and for a short with a little, you know, a little something that allows you to, you know, expand and contract and a button that allows you to download. That's fine if there's only a few things. If you've got a ton of things, it starts to kind of stretch out on your browser page. Depending on the size of your screen, it, it may make it more difficult to get to other stuff. And it sort of defeats the purpose of having a folder to contain all those readings to do that. So I tend to have my folders show their contents on a separate page. Otherwise, I would simply list a series of files and perhaps use the label tool to create a heading and subheading for the files that are inside that folder. That's another video lesson. So that is how you add files and folders to in, within Moodle 3.5.